Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, so for uh, today's uh, tutorial, we are going to discuss a uh, question uh, in your workbook on chapter 4, which is on enzymes. Okay, so we are going to look at first uh, part A for, for the multiple choice questions. Okay, so for question number one, uh, it says which of the following statements is true about enzymes okay so look at uh, the first statement a statement a uh, enzyme is soluble in water is it soluble in water it is soluble in, in water because enzymes are made up of globular proteins okay so as you know proteins can be divided into two okay uh, based on their structure, which is um, you can uh, classify a protein either as globular protein or fibrous protein. Okay, so for globular protein, they are soluble in water. Uh, for fibrous protein, uh, they are not soluble in water because fibrous protein is uh, for the protein that will synthesize or form structures inside cells. Okay. And as for globular proteins, uh, they are soluble in water because uh, uh, as for enzyme, uh, they need to be able to, uh, to, to be soluble in water because uh, enzymes are found uh, in the living cells and inside living cells, uh, you have uh, cytoplasm, which is uh, actually they are uh, uh, made up of aqueous uh, environment. They are aqueous environment. So inside living cells, you have uh, so many biochemical uh, reaction that occurs inside the living cells. And then in order to catalyze the biochemical reaction inside living cells, it requires enzymes. Okay, so that's why enzymes, they need to be able to uh, to be soluble in water okay so the answer will be a okay the answer will be a okay so uh, uh, look at statement b only have one active site so this is not true because uh, as you know we have allosteric enzyme so allosteric enzymes are enzyme that has uh, two or more, okay, two or more active, uh, two or more subunits, okay, and each subunit have uh, its own active site. So these are allosteric enzyme. It has two or more subunits. So this can be one subunit, and this is uh, another subunit, and then this is another subunit, and then this is another subunit. So all together, we call it as allosteric enzyme, okay. So each of these subunit will bind to the same substrate. Okay, same substrate because they have the same structure uh, or shape of the active site. Okay, they are the same enzyme but they are combined together to form the allosteric enzyme. And then uh, statement C is also not correct. Okay, because uh, in order for the enzyme to form the globular protein, they can attain the quaternary structure or the tertiary structure. Okay, so as you know, the, the, the tertiary structure of protein involves uh, the polypeptide chain. Okay, so polypeptide chain to fall into specific, uh, specific shape, for example. Okay, so this is due to the interaction between the side chain of the amino acids. Okay, so uh, uh, in order to form the tertiary, uh, the tertiary structure, it involves the interaction between side chain uh, to form the hydrogen bonds or the ionic bonds or the hydrophobic interactions or the Van der Waals uh, interactions or the disulfide bridge. Okay. So, uh, uh, so for globular protein that uh, that makes uh, or which is the component of enzyme, okay. So they can attain the tertiary and also the quaternary structure, okay. So uh, D is also not correct because uh, they can. Um, it says here catalyze the synthesis of protein. So it is not correct. Okay, because enzyme is to catalyze biochemical reactions that occurs inside living cells. Okay. So question number two, uh, binding of substrate to active site of enzyme causes shape of the active site to change slightly. So look at what is the uh, 
what is the key point in this question or in this statement? The binding of substrate to active site causes, okay, causes shape of the active site change slightly, okay. So this will explain the induced fit model, okay, induced fit model. So as you know, the shape of the, so this is the active site, okay. So the shape of the active site uh, is not complementary to the shape of the substrate. Okay, so but once the substrate enters into the active site of the enzyme, it causes um, the, the active site of enzyme to change slightly. Okay, it changes slightly so that the fit uh, is more precise. Okay, the fit is more precise, then only the enzyme can get, catalyze the reaction. Um, so co for cooperativity, it involves uh, basically the allostric enzyme. Okay, so for this uh, allostric enzyme, they are not stable. Okay, not stable. So not stable. Okay, so uh, this enzyme will keep on changing from active form to the in uh, in active form. Okay, so they always change to active form, inactive form, active form, inactive form. So the, the allostric enzyme is not stable. So in order to stabilize the enzyme into the active state, you will need one substrate to bind to one of the active sites. Okay, and causes all the active, all the, all the subunit to be in the active form. Okay, it locks, okay, it locks all the active, uh, it locks all the subunit to be in the active form. That is cooperativity. You need one substrate to bind to one of the uh, active site to lock all the subunit into the active form. Okay, and for the log and key hypothesis, it is, um, it is where the substrate uh, and the uh, active site of the enzyme uh, have uh, they are they complement each other. They they have shape that complements each other. Okay, a shape that complements uh, each other. So that is uh, log and key hypothesis. Okay, so the the binding between the substrate and the enzyme here it, it forms the enzyme substrate complex. And then for the non-competitive inhibition, it involves uh, inhibitors. Okay, inhibitors to bind to the allostric site. Okay to bind to the allostric site. So what is allostric site? Allostric site is another site on the enzyme, okay, where either inhibitor or inhibitor or activator will bind to, okay. So if inhibitor binds to the allostric site, it causes the enzyme to change shape uh, so that once the enzyme changes shape, uh, the active site also changes shape and substrate cannot bind to the uh, to the active site because the binding of the inhibitor causes the 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 enzyme to be the in in the inactive form it cannot catalyze the reaction but if for example activator bind to the allostric site it causes the enzyme to change shape into the active form okay so that is a regulatory uh, molecule we call it okay for question number three, okay, which of the following statements regarding cofactors is incorrect? Okay, so you have to choose which statement is not true about cofactors. Okay, so uh, so first you have to know what is cofactor. Okay, what is cofactors? So cofactors are non-protein molecule that bind. Okay, that bind to the active site of the enzyme, and the function of this cofactor is to help uh, in the enzyme activity to catalyze the specific reactions. Okay, so you can classify the enzyme into two groups, which is either organic. Okay, or in organic. Okay, so example of organic cofactor you can have coenzyme. Okay, examples of organ inorganic uh, cofactor are the metal ions. So this statement statement is correct. So example of metal ions that can be cofactors are, for example, you can have uh, calcium ion or zinc ion or magnesium magnesium ion or chloride ions. So those are ions that are found in the active site of specific enzyme to catalyze specific reactions. 
So uh, A is not the answer. So B, many enzymes contain non-protein substances which are called cofactors. So the, the statement is correct. Okay, the statement is correct. So that is not the answer. Okay, so cofactors are non-protein substances that are found in the active site of enzyme. So question uh, statement C, coenzyme. Uh, binds loosely and temporarily to the active site of enzyme. So this is the feature of the coenzyme, okay, which is a type of cofactor. So they will bind loosely and temporarily. So this have you this one this point you have to remember. How does the coenzyme bind to the active site of enzyme? They will bind loosely and temporarily. Okay, as for the metal ions, if I'm not mistaken, they will bind tightly to the active site of the enzyme. And then uh, statement D. So C is not the answer, okay, because the statement is true. This statement is also true. This statement is also true. Uh, for statement D, a prosthetic group is a protein molecule that binds permanently to the enzyme. So prosthetic group is actually a type of cofactors. Okay, a type of cofactors, uh, which are they are non-protein molecule that are found in the active site of the enzyme. And how the how does the uh, prosthetic group binds to the enzyme? It binds permanently. But what is wrong about this statement is that it is a non-protein molecule. Okay, so that makes this statement is incorrect. So the answer will be D. Okay. So the next question, question number four, which, uh, okay, bitein, okay, bitein binds tightly to the enzyme carboxylase so that the enzyme function efficiently. So from this statement, you know that biotin is a type of cofactor, okay? But uh, in the choices, it does not give the answer, one of the answer is cofactors. So you have to choose which one. So obviously the catalyst is not, okay, because the catalyst is the enzyme carboxylase. Promoter, okay, it's not a, a promoter. It does not have uh, anything to do with promoter. And then coenzyme. Coenzyme is not the answer because coenzyme bind loosely and temporarily. In the question, it says bind tightly. So coenzyme is not the answer. So that leaves you with the prosthetic group. Okay, the answer would be prosthetic group. Um, okay, uh, question five. Okay, Alu, uh, allopurinol okay, is a drug used to prevent gout. It binds to the active site of enzyme xanthine oxidase. Okay, so this is the enzyme. So decreasing the formation of uric acid. So this is the final product. Decreasing the formation, it means that uh, the rate of reaction will slow down. Okay, so Aluprinol is considered as an inhibitor, okay, inhibitor to the uh, to the reaction uh, to synthesize the uric acid. So obviously, uh, the answer activated is not the correct answer. So eliminate this choice. So which one is it? Allosteric inhibitor, competitive inhibitor, or non-competitive inhibitor? So what is another clue in this question? It binds to the active site of the enzyme. So that makes uh, the aluprinol is a competitive inhibitor. It competes okay, to bind to the active site of the enzyme. Okay, so the next question, okay, question number six. Okay, so question number six, uh, it says adenosine monophosphate, okay, AMP, binds to the enzyme phosphofructokinase, FPK, okay, at a distinct site from the binding site for substrate. Distinct site for the, from the binding site of substrate is referring to the allosteric site. Okay, it is referring to the allosteric site. Okay, so binding site for the substrate is the active site. Okay, and induces the activation, induces the activation of the enzyme. So it means that when the uh, AMP, AMP binds to the enzyme uh, uh, phosphofructokinase, it activates the enzyme. Okay, so what is the role of uh, AMP? So obviously, inhibitor is not the answer. Okay, inhibitor is not the answer because it says here it induces the activation of enzyme. So the answer will be B. 
free. Okay, allostric activator. The activator will bind to the allostric site and causes the enzyme to be activated. Okay, question number seven. Which of the following statement describe cooperativity? So I've explained this earlier. Okay, so what is cooperativity is uh, is the mechanism where it involves allosteric enzyme. Okay, allosteric enzyme. So allosteric enzyme are enzyme that has uh, two or more subunits. Okay, two or more subunits. So this is one subunit and this is another subunit. This is another subunit. And this is another subunit. So these are, this is allosteric enzyme. It has more than two subunit with active site that binds to specific substrate, binds to the same specific substrate. Okay. So allosteric enzyme, as you know, it is not stable. So it keeps on changing in the uh, in the active form and then inactive form, active form in uh, and then in the inactive form, always changing. Uh, its uh, state, okay. So in order to stabilize the enzyme, you need the enzyme to be in the active state. So in order to activate the enzyme, you will always you you only require one substrate to bind to one of the active site, and causes the other sub uh, subunit to be activated. Okay, so it stabilizes all the other subunit in the active form. Okay, so the answer would be C lah. Okay. A substrate binds to one subunit, this one here, okay, promotes a substrate binding to the active site of, of another subunit, okay. So if you look at statement, um, statement B, okay, it says enzyme increase the rate of reaction by providing activation energy to the substrate. So this statement is totally wrong. Why? Because enzyme increases the rate of activation energy by decreasing the activation energy uh, of the substrate or, or of the chemical reaction. Okay, it decreases the activation and energy to increase the rate of reaction. And then for statement D, the binding of an end products okay, of a metabolic pathway to the first enzyme in that pathway. So this one basically describes feedback inhibition. Okay? So uh, for feedback inhibition, it involves the end product to be the inhibitor for the uh, usually for the first enzyme of the metabolic pathway. So, so the, the end product will become basically uh, allosteric inhibitor, it binds to the allosteric site of the first enzyme of the metabolic pathway. What is metabolic pathway? Metabolic pathway is basically uh, the biochemical reaction that occurs inside living cells that uh, involve several enzymes and, and then involve the production of several intermediate products. Okay, so that is metabolic pathway. So uh, it involves the initial substrate binding to the first enzyme and then it produces intermediate product one and then uh, uh, catalyzes by enzyme two, produces the next intermediate products, catalyzes by the next enzyme until it produces the end products. So the end product will uh, accumulate, okay, will accumulate. Uh, when the end product accumulates, it causes the end product, the molecule, to bind to the first enz uh, enzyme of the pathway and, he, and it will uh, bind to the allosteric of, uh, side of the enzyme and causes the enzyme to not be able to catalyze the reaction anymore just for uh, a short period of time or for a certain amount of time, okay? Just to allow the cell to use first, okay, the, the, the end product, okay? So once the end product concentration in the cell uh, is reduced, okay, uh, then only the the uh, the the the, in, uh, the end product is that binds to the allosteric site will detached from the allosteric site and causes the enzyme to change back to its original shape and the enzyme can cat catalyze again the the whole chemical reaction okay to produce uh, the product uh, at the end of the reaction okay so that is uh, feedback inhibition the end product will become the inhibitor for the first enzyme of the pathway and then for question number eight okay uh, it says here mechanism in which the end product of a reaction inhibits okay an earlier step in the pathway is described as um, 
feedback inhibition. Okay, I just explain. Okay, the end product inhibit the early step. Uh, uh, inhibits an early step in the pathway. It means that it in uh, it will inhibit the the usually the first enzyme. Okay, of the metabolic pathway by binding to the allosteric site of the enzyme and causes the enzyme to change shape and not to be able to catalyze the reaction. So, what is the benefit of feedback inhibition? So it prevents the cell from wasting chemical resources, okay? So number nine, uh, an enzyme that catalyzes the transfer of electrons from one molecule to another molecule is known as, so what is the keyword transfer of electrons, okay? Transfer of electrons. Okay, transfer of electrons. So as you know, uh, there are six classes of enzyme based on how the enzyme uh, uh, catalyze the reaction. So in this case, is transfer of electrons. So if the reaction involves transfer of uh, electrons or protons or oxygen, okay, so that involves oxido reductase enzyme. It involves oxidation reduction reaction or redox reaction. So this enzyme falls under the group of oxidoreductase. So you have uh, six classes of enzyme. So the other, the other five you have hydrolase, okay, and then you have, uh, uh, sorry, uh, lyse, okay, hydrolase, transferase. Uh, the other two is isomerase and also ligase. So you have to know why they are called as uh, lice, for example, because the enzyme involved in the breaking of bonds, okay, within the substrate without the addition of uh, water molecule. And as for hydrolase, it involved the breaking of bonds of the substrate with addition of water molecule until it forms this, uh, the products, okay. Transferase, okay, it involved the transfer of functional group from the substrate and then transfer the functional group to another molecule. So example is uh, for functional group, uh, we have learned, okay, in chapter one, which is you can have uh, um, phosphate group or hydroxy group, okay, or um, uh, carbonyl group, okay, so those are functional group uh, that involve in the reaction. And then for uh, for isomerase, it uh, it involves uh, the enzyme to um, convert okay one isomer to another isomer okay such as glucose is converted into fructose okay and then uh, the other one is the you have like ligase okay ligase is the enzyme involved to join molecule together to, uh, and then the joining involves the formation of covalent bonds okay. So that is the six classes of enzyme that you have to know. And then for the last one, uh, question 10, which of the following is not an advantage of using immobilized enzyme? Okay, so what is immobilized enzyme? So immobilized enzyme are, uh, are enzyme that is used in, uh, in the industry, okay, which is used to produce uh, the product in bulk, quantity and uh, why we why do we call it as immobilized enzyme because the enzyme is attached to a support okay a support so the enzyme is attached to the support and the enzyme cannot move okay so that's why we call it as immobilized enzyme so the enzyme for example they can be attached to the support through weak bonds or they can attach to the enzyme through the formation of covalent bonds, or you can um, upper, uh, you can place the enzyme into the into the support that has compartment, okay, like this one, okay, entrapment, uh, or in uh, in in a support that that is uh, we call it as encapsulation, encapsulation, okay. So those are the different types of uh, immobilized uh, enzyme or you can attach the enzyme through the formation of covalent bond, for example. You can attach the enzyme through the formation of covalent bond. So the enzyme cannot move. The only thing that can move is the substrate. So substrate enters into the active site and then and the enzyme catalyzes the reaction and produces the products. Okay. 
So the products are produced in bulk quantity and then they can easily be uh, collected or isolated from the uh, enzyme. Okay, so the product can can be isolated easily from the from the enzyme. Okay, they can be quickly and easily separated from the enzyme. So that's uh, that's uh, so which one is not the advantage? So A is the advantage. Enzyme is more stable. Okay, they they the only thing that moves is the substrate. Okay, so the enzyme will not move. The only thing that moves is the substrate and also the product. So that's why enzyme is more stable. And then uh, you can uh, reuse. The enzyme can be reused, obviously. Okay. And then uh, products are separated from the enzyme. So through immobilized enzyme, you can easily separate the, the products from the enzyme quickly and easily. Okay. And then uh, the last one, so this one, C is correct. Enzyme can be used for different substrate. Obviously not. Okay. Enzyme, as you know, the reaction is specific. Okay, specific. So it uh, it only it only catalyzes specific reaction because it binds to only specific substrate. Okay. So that is the answer will be. D for number 10. Okay, so for now we are going to stop first. Okay, uh, uh, to discuss uh, because we have finished discussing uh, part E. So next we will discuss on part B. Okay.